Mahalo, Matt. Aloha mai kakua pao. We have quite an amazing group and special group of, um, of um, panelists this morning. So what I'd like to do is introduce them to everyone. And then let's get this started. All right. But before we go on, I want to say that my beloved mentor and friend, Kukui Mauna Kea Forth, is in the house. So, eo. Aloha mai, kaua, aloha mai. Rosie Aligado is a Kamehameha Schools graduate who studied abroad and returned home as one of a cluster of seven faculty hired as a result of the University of Hawaii at Manoa a few years ago. She's, by the way, all of their biographies are just beautifully rendered in the website. So please dive in. We have truncated it um, for the purpose of getting their ideas out. But their bios, Rosie's bio, and everyone's bio is in the um, website. She studies microbio, is that microbio? Bi it says bio, bio, microbiology community dynamics and establish the Aligado Lab to pioneer the modeling of microbial processes underlying indigenous native Hawaiian sustainability practices. Welcome, Rosie. <laughs> Pauline Chin is a professor in curriculum studies in the College of Education, University of Hawaii at Manoa. Her work on Malama Ikaaina at the College of Education centers on science education relevant to Hawaii's unique ecosystems and cultural diversity and connects students and teachers to their unique place. She is an inspiration to all of us in the science education and in indigenous epistemology field. Mahalo, Pauline. Aurora Vivani Kagawa is a PhD student in the Geography Department at UH Manoa studying how processes of plant invasion and ecological restoration shape hydrological processes in native dry to mesic forests of Hawaii. Aurora works to better understand how Hawaiian and Kama'aina scholars might successfully navigate undergraduate and graduate STEM programs while fulfilling kuleana to self, family, and community. Welcome, Aurora. Albie Miles is the director of UH West Oahu's new SCFS program. SCFS stands for Sustainable Community Food Systems, and he has conducted extensive research on synergies of family-based, let me see, I want to make sure I get it all. <clears throat> there you are, Albie. On on um, socioeconomic and political obstacles to a more ecological, sustainable, and socially equitable food system. Albu has become an important ally for West Oahu communities, and with the help of many community partners, including Ma'o, Kamehameha Schools, Hapbed, etc., is creating a platform to elevate ancestral knowledge to explore the meaning of wisdoms through the SCFS program here at West Oahu. Tim Botkin is the pro program quarter. Excuse me. Welcome, Albie. Welcome. <laughs> Tim Botkin is the program quarter coordinator and instructor in the sustainability science management program at UH Maui College, and has served as judge for land use and development and had an extensive career in public service before moving to Maui five plus years ago. He is passionately interested in sustainable thinking and practices across organizations and communities. Tim has worked closely with Chancellor Louis Hokuana and their Campus Sustainability Committee to develop an innovative process-based approach to sustainability planning for Maui campus. Welcome, Tim. Noah Kekueva 
Lincoln was born in Kealakekua on Hawaii Island and works to revitalize traditional dry land agricultural systems in Hawaii. He is interested in combining traditional and modern knowledge of land management to evaluate social utility rather than economic con contributions. And we are so going to need your help in the Ku Kani Loko um, Advisory Council. So welcome, Noah. Aloha mai kaua. Welcome to our panelists, and this is, we're going to start first with you, Pauline, and then we'll work our way through. They're going to have five to seven minutes to give your, you their ideas, and then we're going to put three questions up, and they're going to talk amongst themselves. We're very fortunate to have all of you. Welcome. Pauline, you're on. Um, aloha. I'd like to thank my ancestor who blew over here in a really severe El Nino. I didn't realize the significance of that until I started working with um, PVS in looking into uh, intentional navigation. So uh, thank you to that ancestor. Um, we're looking at educating for sustainability, not just a narrow perspective of science education. And it has been my honor to, to work with a team that has helped me to understand place, culture, and language, because I started out as a science wonk. OK, next one, please. Um, the title of this uh, NSF award, and uh, it follows another one that brought Hawaiian language newspapers into the study of science. The question is, does transforming STEM teaching to intersect with Hawaiian culture, language, and place, this is why you see the graphic on the right, it's a much more complex understanding of place than you will find in a Western uh, understanding, support native Hawaiian students' interest and in learning in STEM. So this is a theory-driven design. Uh, one of the first um, founding ideas is from Sewell, and it's that notion of structure and agency. It goes beyond border crossing. This is really looking at the intersections of knowledge, and for that, you need people who have the ability to uh, cross-talk, cross-walk, and you need uh, a lot of uh, trust. The other one is um, Mole et, uh, et al.'s Cultural Funds of Knowledge. All of us know from our own areas that to, to be in a discourse community, we have to have specific ways of thinking, uh, communicating, and writing. So it is that, if we bring that to all of our groups, especially our students, then we know that to be able to teach effectively, we have to understand where students are and we have to share where we are. The third one is the Hawaiian sense of place and well-being. And this is, those of you that have had the time to read some of the uh, documents that were sent to us, got the idea about that feeling of place and enchantment. So the Hawaiian sense of place and well-being incorporates that sense of enchantment uh, with akua, natural elements, self, others, and belonging to a particular place. So when we look at this diagram, um, and this is one that I, I put together because people often don't really understand how complex this is, is that you can see that teachers, uh, K through 20, need to be able to intersect three very different domains, the domain of science, that has its own discourse, knowledge base, place, and that has its own knowledge base, and a, and, and we need to be there with the people that know about it. And then, of course, Hawaiian culture, values, and language. So are we moving towards integration? Well, there are policies. And I'll just go over these briefly. If you're uh, K-12, you know about NGSS. Um, we look at cross-cutting concepts. Na hopena ao, and these are general learner outcomes that are actually grounded in metaphors, Hawaiian metaphors. And they focus on, you'll see the six there, they focus on well-being, security, um, responsibility, et cetera. And then one that may get unwound because we have a, our certain political system, uh, every student succeeds at, uh, supersedes NCLB. And then if you go into the UH executive policy, we do have a system sustainability. That's worth looking into. So when you look at sustainability science, from my perspective, uh, doing professional development, we see that it has this integrative piece, 
It supports systems thinking, and it develops teacher expertise and leadership. And if you've ever been in a system, um, I was uh, 25 years in the DOE. Uh, once you begin to be a little bit different, there's a lot of grass there. I was uh, speaking to somebody uh, today about it. Once you start sticking your head above the grass, sometimes you're kind of more of a target than a leader. So <laughs> there are some of these issues here. Okay, okay, <laughs> some of you guys know about that. Okay, so going back to how do you think about this, right? So that you can get funded, right? It's called design-based research. We look at context, design, and enactment. So I go back to the person who put the knot together, and that's Dr. Isabella Abbott, who in 2010 got me to sit down at dinner with Puakea. And from there she said, well, you know, Puakea's got these 4,000 articles that have to do with geoscience from the Hawaiian newspapers. Okay, you're in education, you guys talk to each other. And from that, you know, you get that, oh, she's after us for something, but I don't know what it is, but you know what it is. And so that led to our first NSF project that called Kahua Ao, where Hawaiian newspapers, language, and culture are the foundation of geoscience education. So, of course, then you have to put your team together, and then you have to think about what do the assignments actually look like. So I'm not going to go over them, but as you look through it, you can see that it looks like it's all over the map, and literally it is because it is all over the map. And you have to enable people to have enough time to think about it. And if you don't get them actually out in the field to, to be able to develop a map for themselves, it's not going to work. You also have to employ diverse assessments and you have to take the long view. We're finding that in your uh, grant cycle, two years, it actually takes maybe three. Um, so anyway, outcomes, cut to the chase. How do we assess? Here's the, the nitty gritty one that I, I promised NSF. Um, they want to know if can we come up with a survey, and this is only part of a longer survey, that shows that what we're doing w with our teachers and then with the students has some kind of impact. So here are five questions, and it's a Likert scale. I'm highlighting uh, Q3 and Q5 because these have to do with Hawaiian language, Hawaiian culture. Um, Q1, service projects, Q2, STEM, Q4, working in careers related to sustainability. Okay, here's the findings. Fourth graders on Kauai, uh, only 22. I know statistically you can't do anything with this. Um, Oahu, eighth grade, um, and this is a school on the Leeward Coast, eighth grade. What I'd like you to look at is that there's going to be the same trend. Um, they're all positive, and what we think is really interesting, Native Hawaiian students compared to non-Native Hawaiian students are more interested in all of these things. Service projects, STEMs, careers, but critically, they're even more interested in courses and careers related to Hawaiian studies, culture, and language. And what I'm finding is that there are a number of Hawaiian uh, schools in Hawaiian areas that do not offer Hawaiian language and don't even have a kupuna program. So what is now our ongoing uh, research? We're looking at now impact on students' identity, academic outcomes, interest in future learning and careers, we're looking at Nahopena Ao as an assessment, and our early findings across the board have all been positive. We're trying to break it out by demographics, and we're trying to get higher numbers. My question is for the teachers, will your sustainability curriculum be sustained? Okay, so then just reflecting on sustainability learning competencies, let's look at the enablers, and then let's look at the barriers. And having been through the DOE system and the college of uh, the university system with my just a lot of time in, in the educational systems, I can see there's specifically enablers and their personalities too, and there's specifically barriers and that is also personalities. So with that, I'll stop. Thank you. Mahalo Nui, Professor. Mahalo Nui for that. 
Mahalanui, as we proceed into the idea of what wisdom, I want you to encapsulate one idea. So I'm going to ask you to turn really quickly to your partner and little and um, encapsulate one idea with your with your partner very quickly. Um, what's a highlight idea that you learn from um, Professor Chin right now around um, design based? Um, research, what did you learn, so that things get cemented into you. Um, 30 seconds, go. One idea. Oh, she did a lot. She did a lot. Thank you, partner. Thank you, partner. Thank you, partner. Kahua A'o. The very name, Pauline, signifies the practice. Kahua A'o, the, the platform, the energetic field, the foundation of teaching and learning. Rosie, you're up. Have fun. That I, that I brought with me to you, that is our family only, that within that kind of shares um, who we are. So I wanted to start off with how I teach my students, how to approach it, and the challenges that I have felt. Um, so hoping to get a little bit more granular. So I always start off my classes by being very clear about the fact that our people are oceanographers. We came here, our ability to come here was built upon accumulated knowledge of the currents, the winds, and all of all they're in. Oh, sorry, color my yeah, sorry. Um, so I always I always start off with saying that we we are oceanographers. Next, I also say that um, our people are geologists in geophysics. Through our chants, our oli, our mele, our hula, we know so much about the geological features because we are people of you know the circle of fire. As we have come across Oceania, we've borne witness to some amazing phenomenon, and yet. With having all of that accumulated knowledge, I want to show you the reality of what the picture is like in the School of Ocean and Earth Science and Technology. So next. Oh, there was a, there's a slide missing. That's okay. Can we go to that? Can we try go to the one right after this one, please? Kalamai. Maybe. Oh, yeah. So this is the reality check. Native Hawaiians, can you go? It's like I think it's going to. Yeah. So if we see that. A quarter of the population are Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander, according to the 2010 census. And one third of all school-aged children are Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander. But in SOAST, if you can advance, you know, go one more, it's going to animate in. These are the numbers that we're dealing with. So, oh, mina mina, okay. So when I came to, when I, when I came in 2013 back home to the University of Hawaii, oh, go back, it's okay, I'll just go talk story. When I came home, <laughs> There were three Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders who were master's students um, in the entire program. There were zero um, PhD students, there were zero postdocs, and there were zero faculty when I entered the program. And arguably, SOEST is the largest geosciences program in the nation. And that was where we were faced, okay? And so that was pretty dire. And I always question myself why that is. So if you can go back, sorry, to the previous slide to this one. Sorry about that, go back, yeah, oh, forward. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I always ask, what are the barriers for Native Hawaiian Pacific Islanders? And I think this is germane to this conversation because we're talking about the challenges, specifically as climate. And the reason why it's important is because these are the very fields, oceanography, geology, atmospheric science, that we have to build capacity in in order to address the very complex problems of climate change. You know, the question of how does this field relate to my family and to my community? And how does this educational system accommodate my way of knowing? So I want to say that I think, to me, the biggest thing that we need to do is we need to change how we measure institutional success. So historically, our measure of success was survival, right? Could we make it to a new island, adapt, use our accumulated knowledge um, to increase our population to, you know, ho'ulu lahui? And, um, I think that, that within that is this idea that when we talk about two knowledge systems, why is there always this constant need for validation of our ike kupuna? The very fact that we have survivors here is the peer review. Yeah. That's the ultimate selection peer review. We all here, we all surviving. Um, and, it's, and, and also what's very clear is that as, as people who have persisted across small islands with limited resources, our traditions are rich with adaptation prior to Western contact. And I think that when we think about moving forward in ways of, 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 of really connecting with our students, we need to stand strong in that ground of our people are survivors and adapters to dramatic changes in natural resources. Um, here are some challenges. How do we teach our people now to value Ike Kupuna if they don't know how? And what I mean by that is that we might have we are at a kind of a generational inflection point in that we have a shrinking pool of kupuna who know this knowledge. And we have a small pool of people who are willing to take on that practice as like an everyday thing, as in beyond just community work days, as in people who are going to grow the taro or rebuild the fish pond. Um, and so we ha that is, that's, a, that's an area that we can build capacity in. and then. That again leads back to what I'm saying is that we need to then change how we measure institutional success. We need to think about how many people are we growing in these very specific cultural-based skill sets that can have an impact on Hawaii's resiliency. Um, so kind of with that, that's all I kind of wanted to say, throw those kind of um, grenades at you of how do we teach our people to value Ike Kupuna if we don't know how. Um, I want to end with like a, a saying by Hi'ile Cavello is an indigenous person interprets what they see into action. So that's how we have to, that's, I think that's how we kind of frame forward. And you don't have to be an indigenous person to do that, but I think that would be my kind of measure of success. So with that, I kind of, if we can move forward a little bit into um, this, to my personal of how I kind of try and engender this with my lab, what I try to do is, you know, you hear the word a lot, oh, community-based research. I try and turn it and I just do science for community. And this, these are my students who I bring in. Um, you can see almost all of them are local. We work in partnership with our community partners. We, don't, we start the questions where we, at, we talk to, each, to them and see what they want to know and what's interesting to them. And then we meld together our questions. Um, and that's difficult sometimes. And it's difficult to get research to fund that. But we really feel that's the best way to go about doing it. Um, so yeah, so I, I kind of left you with some dire statistics. Since coming to the university in five years, uh, in, in the past four and three and a half years, um, now we have a much larger kind of cadre of Native Hawaiian faculty, staff, and students. So we have, since I've been come on, we have four Native Hawaiian faculty. Uh, we have one, no, we have two Native Hawaiian postdocs, and we have a number of Native Hawaiian um, master's students, and we are growing our undergraduate population because we realize that our Native Hawaiian population and local students are at the community colleges, so we've built bridges um, to, to really bring them on campus and identify them using these kinds of models um, that I've spoke about. So that's it, mahalo. Ooh, mahalo, mahalo nui, Rosie, mahalo nui. You bring that to, to bear in a beautiful way. Mahalo. May your, your teaching flower and your students prosper. Mm -hmm.